Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. My name is David Curry, and I am Senior Vice President of EDEM and CF CFD Products at Altair. During today's session, we'll be outlining two key solutions available within the Altair ecosystem, which are designed to simulate how granular materials and fluids interact. That's EDEM AccuSolve and Barracuda by CPFD Software, which is available on units through the Altair Partner Alliance. During the session today, we'll explain each solution and their key features, how they complement each other and when to choose one or the other, and also how you can get started with using them. A few housekeeping notes before we begin. The presentation will last approximately 45 minutes and afterwards we will have a Q&A session. All the lines are currently muted, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box during the presentation and questions will be addressed at the end of the session. This session is also being recorded and will be, and will be posted to the Altair resource library so you can watch it again or share it with your colleagues later. So joining me in the presentation today are Peter Blazer, CPFD Operations Vice President and Ravi Tega Chaganti, Senior Product Specialist CFD at Altair. Welcome, Ravi and Peter. I'm delighted that you can present uh, alongside me today. But to get started, let's set some context and talk about granular materials. And the first thing you need to know is that the world is full of them. Now, whether you think of them as granular materials or rocks, powder, tablets, granules, or perhaps even just good old fashioned dirt, granular materials are everywhere. In fact, they're present in something like 70% of all industrial processes. For example, in mining, you have things like iron ore being mined or transported on conveyor belts. In the pharmaceutical sector, bulk materials and granular materials appear in the form of powders or tablets being processed. And in agriculture, grain being harvested or soil being plowed. And where you have these industrial processes, you invariably you find that there's an engineer trying to make sense of what's going on. And getting a grasp of designing for granular materials can lead to significant improvements in the performance of a piece of equipment that needs to handle, transport, and operate in such environments. The challenge is though that these materials are complex in their behavior. So for example, if you consider an excavator going through sand, if that sand is dry, then it will behave more like a fluid. It will be very free flowing and an excavator bucket will likely pass through it very easily. However, if you get that same sand material wet, it will start to become cohesive and sticky with very different properties that will significantly affect the loads acting on the bucket and the surrounding equipment parts. This inherent variability is seen across industries for many material types and numerous different types of applications, and where understanding the behavior and influence of granular materials is vital to a successful design. And if we take that a step further, in many cases, the granular material does not exist in isolation. Their behavior is significantly influenced by the liquids and gases in which they are found. And this further ramps up the design challenges that engineers face. The type of particle fluid behavior can vary greatly, either from dense phase to more dilute flows. There can be heat transfer, chemical reactions, um, or you can be talking about an application that's at a, a small scale, such as in the case of a vacuum cleaner, right up to the largest of chemical reactors. These particle fluid or multi-phase flows are accounted across industries, including the energy sector, agricultural applications, mining, oil and gas chemicals, and pharmaceuticals. Now, sometimes the particle fluid behavior is simply coincidental to an application, but would still need to be captured as part of the design process. However, in other cases, the, the use of fluids is fundamental to the success of a particular process. So for example, fluidization of materials to encourage drying or reactions, or the use of airflow to separate crops within agricultural applications like harvesting, means getting the right particle fluid interaction is critical to a design. In these multi-phase cases, the way particles of fluid interact adds another layer of complexity that an engineer must address as part of their design process. And such systems with the increased uh, behavioral complexity have also become more increasingly difficult to evaluate using traditional design methods such as physical testing. And so simulation offers a great way to gain insight into what is happening in a particle fluid use case. 
And so today we want to help you understand the solutions you have available on Altair units and to help you understand when to use which solution for your application. And with that, I will hand over to Ravi Tega Chiganti, our Senior Product Specialist at Altair, um, who will share more insight into our EDEM Axisol coupling before he hands over to Peter, who will discuss the Barracuda Virtual Reactor. Over to you, Ravi. Thank you, Dave, for the great introduction to the fluid particle flows that we come across in various industries. So in the next few minutes, I'll talk about the various tools and softwares that are present or available in the Altair software ecosystem that can be used to model these uh, granular flows as well as fluid flows and how we can combine the, the best of these both tools uh, to simulate particle fluid multi-phase multi -phase flows. So first, uh, starting with EDEM. EDEM, as you know, is a, a very high performance software that is that can be used for modeling granular bulk material flows. And it is powered by a discrete element method. In short, we call it as DEM. And EDEM can be used to simulate the behavior of bulk materials such as fine powders, coal, ores, and granular materials such as uh, agricultural crops, grains, and other waste materials. And using EDEM, engineers can derive crucial insights into how bulk materials interact with equipment as well as the other materials and how these tools can be used to improve the operational efficiency and uh, overall drive the productivity and throughput of these systems. And AccuSol, which is a general purpose safety solver that is based on fine element method, comes with a, a broad set of features ranging from single and um, multi single and multi-phase flows as well as uh, heat transfer and the capabilities of AccuSolve can be coupled with additional tools like OptiStruct, EDEM, and MotionSolve to simulate various multi-physics simulations. So next we'll talk about how we there are, how we can combine the capabilities of EDEM and AccuSolve and also individual capabilities in these tools to simulate various ranges of granular flows, fluid phase flows, and coupled particle fluid flows. So, so far we have seen various examples of the granular general industrial flow process that happen. And in order to capture the fluid fluid phase behavior as well as the particle phase behavior, we need to ha have the right tools to model the uh, physical behavior accurately. And AccuSol single, single phase fluid flow capabilities supports a wide range of use cases, varying from steady state flows, transient flows, and heat transfer. And it also supports a, a, a feature called AccuTrace that can be used to simulate the transport of uh, fine particles that are, then it can be used to simulate the dilute phase flows. And the multi-phase capabilities in AccuSolve can be used to simulate even dispersed flows by taking into account the interaction of the fluid phase on the particles. And the Eulerian grander multi-phase flow model that is available in AccuSolve can be used to simulate the uh, high solid concentrations up to 0.63 volume fraction of solids uh, where the effect of both the fluid phases is taken into account on each other and the solid phase effects are modeled through the kinetic theory of granular flows so and these models available in AccuSolve can be used to simulate slightly slightly complex model uh, multi-phase flows as well as uh, uh, dilute and uh, disperse flows by combining the capabilities of EDEM, because as EDEM is a granular simulation software that can be used to simulate the effect of particle, particle collisions and particle equipment interactions. And by combining the powerful capabilities of EDEM with AccuSolve, you have additional approaches to simulate the fluid particle multi-phase flows. One such approach is uh, AccuSolve EDEM one-way coupling, uh, where we still resolve all the particle contacts and particle equipment contacts, but we take into account the effect of fluid on the particle phase flow, but the effect of particle is not uh, realized on the fluid. This is really suited for dilute phase flows and quick design iterations in order to concentrate more on the solid phase flow uh, rather than the interaction between the two phases. And we have is the AccuSolve and two-way coupling, which 
can be used to simulate the effect of two-way interaction between particles and fluid. Here, each particle is tracked individually, and the fluid fluid particle drag forces are calculated by aqueous solve, and the effect of the particle phase on the solid on the fluid is also considered. This is a high fidelity approach for simulating fluid particle flows, and this is one of the solutions that we'll be focusing on today, as well as the Barracuda virtual reactor. So going over the key features of aqueous solve and coupling. Uh, so, so when we look at various uh, granular multiphase flows, we have fluid flows that involve fine powders that, that have particles at the micron scale up to millimeter scale. And then you also have flows in industries like uh, mining, where you have particles that can be of a much larger size and various types of industries where you have a particle science ranging in between, like the agriculture industry where you have particles in the range of millimeter scale. And all these particles come at come in different shapes and size distributions as well. And using aqueous coupling, users can simulate any number of uh, material types. And these can be of different shapes and sizes. Like if you want to simulate a, a powder, which is very fine bulk, bulk solid, you can simulate them using a spherical model. Or if you want to simulate the interaction of uh, non spherical particles like plate shaped particles or disks or ellipsoids, you also can use the non spherical particle shapes such as polyhedral or spherocylinders and multi sphere particles to simulate the non spherical particles. And in order to take into account the effect of fluid on these non spherical particles, uh, we support both spherical and non spherical drag and lift models. And in some applications, it's really important to take into account the orientation of this non-spherical particles with respect to the local fluid. We also support orientation dependent drag, lift and torque models as well. And another feature that we have is the two-way heat transfer. So uh, we can also simulate the heat uh, transfer between the solid and fluid phases. And this is also support. And uh, in addition to the heat transfer and as well as momentum transfer, uh, we can also simulate the drying of uh, particles such as um, uh, fruit, fruit grain drying or drying of uh, ore particles as well. So using the mass transfer feature in aqueous and coupling, users can be uh, users can simulate the process such as tablet coating and drying as well as uh, rotary dryers and things like that. Uh, in addition to the uh, the features that we have looked so far, one of the strongest capability of aqueous solvent coupling is its capability to uh, model complex system dynamics with by using the mesh motion capabilities of aqueous solve. So aqueous solve is based on finite element method, which supports unstructured unstructured uh, meshes and can tolerate highly uh, skewed mesh elements while still being stable and giving accurate results. And using the strong mesh motion capabilities of active solvent and coupling, we, users can simulate uh, processes like grain separation inside a combined harvester. I like can see in this example, we have two types of motion that are happening. That is oscillation of the sieve as well as a blower, which blows air onto the grain that is introduced into the system. And the process of separation can be simulated here accurately by taking into account the, by capturing the accurate motion of these complex components. And all of these drag, lift, and torque models can be customized through user-defined functions uh, in IQSolve. And also, using the API capabilities of Eden, users can implement custom contact models as well as factories. So these powerful customization capabilities can be uh, used to an effect that you can implement your own drag, lift, and torque models that you develop through experimental testing or any other research that you do at your companies. and also want to experiment with different contact models that can be implemented through the API. In addition to uh, the contact models and customization, we also have a very powerful Python-based post-processing utility called EdenPy that can be used for advanced data analysis that you can extract data at the particle scale and use further uh, data analysis and visualization that can provide valuable insights into the system at even at particle scale as well as the full system level. And our coupling comes with a wide range of help manuals and documentation that can be used to 
tra train your engineers and even from beginners to advanced level users. Uh, we have tutorials that cover the step-by-step -step process of setting up these models and understanding the behind it and how to set up a, a particular use case as well as industrial examples and e-learning modules that can help you get the coupling and um, uh, even the software implementation and everything. So using IP solid medium coupling, we can simulate a wide range of industrial uh, bulk material flows ranging from agriculture industry, pharmaceutical and process industries to uh, mining and metallurgical industries as well. So he, here we look at some of those applications. Uh, I should let you know that there are wide, many more applications that we can handle. It's, this is just a subset of uh, a very small subset of all the applications that can be solved with acusolvid and coupling. So if you look at agriculture industry, we can simulate uh, processes like uh, grain separation inside a combine harvester. We can simulate ha sugarcane harvesters, seed, seed spreaders, seed uh, distribution tower, as well as lawn mowers and residue spreaders and many more in the agriculture equipment industry and in the process and the pharmaceutical industry we can simulate uh, fluid ice beds booster coated tanks and uh, many other applications in addition to that using the mass transfer capabilities you can simulate the process of drying of materials inside rotary dryers fluid ice bed dryers and and lots of other applications so one in the next few slides, we'll talk about one such uh, case study that was done by a customer and how he, how they were able to use acusolvidium coupling to derive variable insights into the process. So, yeah, uh, Novo Nordisk is a pharmaceutical company that is based out of Europe uh, that specializes in developing medicines for uh, various uh, problems like diabetes and uh, uh, lots of other diseases. So they, uh, they were able to use acusolvid and coupling for simulating the process of uh, powder discharge through a hopper. So here we look at the pneumatic conveying system that is uh, replicating the actual plant. So pneumatic conveying is a commonly employed process for transportation of uh, bulk solids in industrial manufacturing processes. However, such uh, process involve challenges uh, like plug flow and blockage that are present in systems and lead to higher maintenance requirements as well as uh, reduced product quality. So these problems are particularly common for fine bulk solids like powders and uh, uh, cohesive materials. These problems can be sometimes traced to this feed hopper that we're looking here, where processes like arching and rat holing result in intermittent discharge and pressure surges. So developing an understanding of the complex interaction between the operating, operating conditions that are applied and the bulk solid properties that give rise to this phenomena can lead to an improvement in process operation. However, relying only on physical experiments can be expensive and time consuming. Therefore, our customer or our user uh, looked for um, a numerical model that we see here. Uh, and in this work, uh, the aim of the study was to identify a relation between the system operating parameters and the powder properties to the overall efficiency and uh, performance. So a two-way couple CFDDM modeling approach is used here. Uh, model it, uh, an axisymmetric hopper system, uh, which is uh, connected to a horizontal pipe. And the bulk solid is modeled with DM particles uh, with a, a adhesive contact model to model the cohesive nature of the powder. And the airflow is modeled with AccuSol. And we performed a parametric study uh, by varying the Pressure, pressure difference that is applied across the system with the aim of relating the applied pressure drop with the system performance. The predicted evolution of the mass transfer rate, so we have three different uh, pressure drops that are applied and looking at how the mass transfer rate depends on the pressure drop that is applied, we can see there is more or less a, a linear relationship between the pressure drop that is applied and the mass transfer rate across the system. 
So we can see that here in this uh, graph where we have three different pressure drops. And as we increase the pressure difference between the uh, inlet and the outlet of the system, we have, we can see the improvement in the mass transfer rate. In addition to this, there was a study that was performed to, to analyze the effect of extreme pressure drops. Like, so we have seen that as increasing the pressure drop, we have, we have better mass flow rate, but is that all like, what if you go to a, an extreme pressure drop? So we have simulated a, a comparison study where you're comparing two different pressure drop values. Uh, one of them is an extreme pressure drop of 65 kilopascal. And um, it's a, a medium cohesive material. So as we increase the pressure difference, we can see that the, the mass transfer rate uh, kind of uh, changes from a linear transfer to a, a, a nonlinear behavior. And we getting uh, uh, behavior like a propensity for arching and collapse here. So this study revealed that even though the mass transfer rate is improved, uh, the propensity for arching and intermittent discharge also increased at higher pressure drops. So the mass flow rate is nonlinear. And also the, so we can see if you look at the uh, mass transfer rate at the outlet, so there's more fluctuations and intermittent discharge at higher pressure drops. And also looking at the compressive forces on the particles. So with higher pressure drops, we see that the compressive forces increases, which can lead to agglomeration and also uh, material buildup at the outlet. In addition to the study on operating conditions, we also looked at the material properties of the powder. So what if we have a, a very cohesive material and how does how does the system performance uh, depend on the cohesive nature of the material? So in this study, we fix the pressure drop at 20 kilopascal and just simulate uh, two different materials. One of them is a medium cohesive material and the other one is high cohesive. And looking at the results that we were able to get out of this, for, for the high cohesive material, the arch stability increases and that leads to a highly discontinuous flow behavior. We can see that the stresses are in, in the at the pipe bend are higher. So that leads to uh, high consolidation and it can result in agglomeration and uh, clogging of the pneumatic system. So for such high high pressure drops and high cohesive uh, sorry for for a high cohesive material we see there's a highly discontinuous flow behavior. So uh, studies like this can provide valuable insights into the uh, complex relationship between the operating parameters, the bulk solid properties and uh, various other things. And these things need to be uh, studied carefully and CFDDM numerical modeling approach can be great, greatly helpful for that. Like you can see from this, uh, testimonial from our customer, which is helping them improve the overall efficiency of the process. So, so far we have seen from high level overview, uh, an introduction of uh, the product CDM and AccuSolve and how these two, how these two tools can be combined together to simulate a, a wide range of um, flows, like ranging from just right granular flows, which are highly dependent on the particle particle interactions to fluid flows that are that can be simulated with AccuSolve and also a wide range of um, particle fluid loading ratios, which can be handled with EDAM and AccuSolve very comfortably. So, and we have seen this from the physics point of view, but once we add additional layers like the scale and complexity of the system, like what if you want to simulate a large fluid as paired with billions of particles or more than 50 million, 60 million particles or any other uh, uh, process that involve uh, equipment that are of a very large scale. And if you throw in additional layers of complexity like chemical reaction between the particles and fluid. So this can make this overall process even more challenging and achieving or running simulations in a, in a reasonable way with uh, less computational cost can be really challenging. But our partners at CPFD, which is Computational Particle Fluid Dynamics, a uh, software have developed an extremely powerful tool that is suited for situations exactly like this. And now I would like to invite uh, Peter Plazer, Vice President of Operations at CPFD Software, to talk about the solution Barracuda Virtual Reactor and how this can be used as a complementary tool to simulate 
complex industry scale uh, particle fluid flows. Thank you, Ravi. And I think at this point I'll take over presenting and it's it's really my privilege to uh, to be able to, to speak about how this, this all complements. So if somebody will go ahead and uh, offer me the screen share. Uh, while we're doing that, I will remind everybody uh, that uh, the questions, you don't have to wait to the end to get the questions in. And uh, should be coming across on my screen now, I believe. So if you have some questions, uh, please go ahead and do that as Ravi's speaking, as I'm speaking. Um, and with that, let me launch into uh, introducing Veracruz Virtual Reactor. Uh, so first of all, our company, CPFD Software, uh, we are advancing multi-phase simulation and technology specifically for fluidized particle systems such as fluidized bed reactors. Our product, Veracruz Virtual Reactor, it models the three-dimensional transient multi-phase, so that's the fluid particle hydrodynamics, how the gas particle or liquid particles are moving, affecting each other, the heat transfer, and uh, the multi-phase chemical reaction at the large scale in industrial units. And we're super excited that uh, for the past six, six plus months now, uh, virtual reactor is available through the Altair Partner Alliance. So you can use your Altair units uh, on our uh, Barracuda Virtual Reactor as well. Virtual Reactor is a it's a physics-based engineering software package. So for CFD users, there's CFD in there for the fluids. Uh, it has Lagrangian particles. We'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. It really is the only one that's uh, commercial software focused specifically on this large scale uh, chemically reacting fluid particle flows. So complementing Altair's other tools in the space. It is a full software package. So it comes with the user interface, uh, the solver, post-processing. And it, it really is easily deployed uh, as, as your company sees fit. Some prefer to run on-premise. There's uh, a, a big move for cloud adoption. It runs on both. It can run on Windows or, or Linux operating systems. Uh, and the parallelization is with NVIDIA GPUs, so you see excellent scale up, and we'll get to that in a moment as well. There's really two types of systems uh, that virtual reactors use to model. Uh, the, the largest uh, proportion of use cases, and, and certainly historically the, 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 the only one at some point, was uh, gas part of phase domain with particles. So picture a fluidized bed, as I'm showing here, this is a small FCC regenerator, still get an idea for, for scale. Um, because it's gas phase, uh, the continuum is compressible flow calculations, so multiple species, compressible gases, and then no limit uh, to any of the materials in whether it's the gas phase or the discrete phase. The discrete phases are, are particles, could also be droplets. There's no limit to the number of those particle species, droplet species, and you're getting the full particle size distribution and other discrete properties. And all this is coupled together with, with the thermal calculations, the heat transfer, and multi-phase chemical reactions. More recently, we've expanded capabilities just over a year ago to also include liquid phase domains. Uh, so these are vapor liquid solid systems where it's predominantly a liquid phase with particles and bubbles. This example here is an ebulated bed reactor where you have a, a liquid fluidized bed of catalyst particles, bubbles moving through that in vapor liquid equi equilibrium um, with, the, with the two phases, um, with the, the, the liquid and gas phases. Uh, there is Similarly here, no limit to the number of materials in the fluid or discrete phase of the fluids incompressible in this case being a, being a liquid. Uh, no limit to the number of species, still the full size distribution of the particles or the, or the bubbles, <clears throat> all coupled with the heat transfer and chemical reactions. So those are really the two types of systems for which it's used. And, and just like Ravi was showing with Edomachisolve, there's a broad range of application areas historically a very large one, it still is, is the refining industry with the fluidized catalytic cracking units, very large units. I'll go through an example of that in a moment. Close to that, petrochemicals, polyethylene, polypropylene, catalytic hydro dehydrogenation processes, uh, gasification, uh, broad uses uh, for gasification of coal, uh, pet coke, and, and more recently, biomass for, for renewables or waste to fuel, so municipal solid waste gasification. 
materials and chemi chemicals, this could be cement calcination, ore roasters, power generation, these circulating fluidized beds, and the list goes on. Really the biggest growth area we're seeing today, I would say is in this clean technology and renewable space. I, I don't even know how to characterize these broad applications, but these are the energy transition applications related to sustainability, renewables, decarbonization, things like hydrogen and, and carbon capture, uh, plastic recycling, uh, materials for uh, batteries, uh, going down that list. And, uh, and, and so you see the commonality and research, fluidization research, other applications, there's, there's broad, but the commonality is, is fluid particle interactions at large scale, often coupled with, with chemical reactions. And we've been honored with a good amount of recognition in, in just the past few years. I won't go through this list other than to say it spans from things like refining well-established industries uh, to a lot of emerging technologies in the sustainability space. And um, we've been honored with that. A few things I want to say briefly on sort of what sets virtual reactor apart for these large-scale fluid particle systems. And um, here's a few of these things. First and foremost is the discrete particle properties. Just like for you DEM users out there, you know, every particle size matters. It's it's the, the, the whole mixture, not a single size that typically captures behavior. And so with Barracuda Virtual Reactor, both on the inputs, whether it's a particle size distribution or other discrete properties, uh, composition as we're showing here, and not just on inputs, but throughout the calculation, the evolution of things like uh, size, composition, temperature, uh, history, resonance time, all uh, is on a discrete particle basis. So every particle has its own uh, behavior. Virtual reactor also can model, does model the full range of solid loadings. Uh, and I love this, this animation, uh, well, animation on the left. On the right is actually a, a, a video from a cold flow experiment run at uh, National Energy Technology Laboratory many years ago. Uh, but what I love about it is you have regions that are you know, fairly dense, still fluidized flow, uh, more energetic and bubbling, uh, quite energetic, uh, fairly dilute, more pneumatic transport, some areas that are almost entirely uh, uh, empty of particles, and the full range of solid loadings is, is captured in the same simulation uh, without knowing in advance where, where it'll be denser to loot. And this is coupled with that thermal, the heat transfer and the multi-phase reactions. In this example, we have the gas particle motion here shown on the left, and then the, uh, the heat transfer, you have a hot regenerated catalyst cool as the vaporized uh, droplets come in. In this case, a very simple four lump model showing evolution of various gaseous species uh, while depositing uh, a coke on the catalyst. So the, the reactions are multi-phase, both in, in this case in the gas and on the particle level. And it is built for industry. So uh, we'll get into a minute of like, well, how does this all fit together? You know, what does Edomacusol do? What does Barracuda do? Really, the point here is this is, is is built for that large scale with that complex that added complexity, and so you're looking at units that could be you know 10 meters in diameter with filled with particles that are you know less than 100 micron on average, and so the scale, the complexity, uh, is going into a lot of the assumptions behind it from the beginning to get that speed. And this is really uh, where the, the scalable GPU and even multi-GPU acceleration comes in. We were an early adopter uh, and actually a preferred partner in, uh, of NVIDIA in their ISV partner program. And so our parallelization was on, on GPUs. And for those aren't familiar, you know, here's a uh, maybe one generation back, uh, NVIDIA A100. You know, this, these things have like 10,000 or 20,000 cores. You can put multiple GPUs in a machine and some early benchmarking on when, on our first multi-GPU release, and this is presented several years ago already, uh, but showed anywhere from say 50 to 400 times faster than CPU, just running on a single box on a workstation computer with, with one to four GPUs. And we've seen scale ups over a thousand X now. Uh, it does come with powerful uh, post-processing and also extensible. So just like Ravi mentioned, um, you can make those pretty pretty animations, but you can also dump the raw data out and process it with Python. 
uh, if you want to take that further. And and I will brag on our support team for a moment. It does come with with full support. Uh, so I love this graphic because it shows uh, you know the web meeting here, looking at not just the inputs, the software, or the visualization outputs, but even even you know what might be happening. How do you you know put your chemical reactions? Uh, are they suitable for your system? The support team are people who use the software uh, every day themselves. And so we, if you're uh, licensing Barracuda virtual reactor using your Altair units uh, through Altair, you still get access to our full support team. And so let me just illustrate a sample, a quick use case. Uh, this is taken from uh, the refining industry. This is the Geelong refinery in Australia. Um, this is a you know bird's eye view, uh, high flying bird. But somewhere on this complex is something called a fluidized catalytic cracking unit. And uh, following a, a change they made, this is back in uh, 2011, uh, this fluidized catalytic cracking unit started to see some transient temperature excursions. Uh, the flue gas line was getting hot and would run away at times. And what would happen is the operator would intervene to the point where they started pulling back throughput. Um, it was actually costing them tens of thousands of dollars per day. Um, and that's all documented in, and you, you can uh, ask me for the reference after or, or uh, make a note of this uh, when we when we post the playback. Uh, there's full publication behind this with more details. I'll just give the real high level overview. So some change was made in this large industrial unit, and here's what it looks like. So here's a, a an image from uh, a turnaround where once every five years they they take this down and make changes. So if you're going to make changes, you want to make sure you're doing it right and reduce that risk of any down, uh, unexpected downside. So what we're looking at here, just to get an idea of when I say scale and complexity, this unit on the left is the regenerator. Over here's a reactor, the distillation column. So you're getting a feel for scale. Uh, you have one shot to open this up and make changes. Uh, the Barracuda virtual re reactor model, the regenerator, uh, was used. And again, you're seeing the the on the left, the gas particle motion. Uh, second from left is the temperature. There's some non-uniformity there. Uh, the blue-white there is the oxygen utilization. It should be burning up all the oxygen in the unit. Um, it should be a full burn unit, so there shouldn't be any CO leaving. Uh, but when we're looking at where is the concentration of CO still present, the green on the right shows that. And we see is this asymmetry. And I won't go into all the technical details. The paper outlines that. But needless to say, using the software, they're able to identify the root cause and then do virtual testing of various alternatives uh, they actually implemented this, so the simulation indicated which changes would be beneficial, implemented during a turnaround in 2016, and, and then had the luxury of comparing uh, a year's worth of operational data, both before that turnaround and after. They found a few things. Uh, the average afterburn was lower, uh, just a little bit, um, but, but significant as you're getting closer to the metallurgical temperature limitations. Uh, but the transient excursions where these temperatures would run away and the panel operator would have to intervene, this went down 75% uh, by, by simple changes. And uh, they were able to get 4% more throughput uh, through the unit. And again, as it says in the, in the paper, they didn't want to put an exact number, but they said it was addressing an issue that was costing them tens of thousands of dollars per day. Um, and so just gives you a feel, you know, as you look at the different cases, how to how Barracuda Virtual Reactor really complements uh, the other Altair tools, and with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna transition back to Ravi, uh, who's gonna tell us about we have all these different tools. And we're, he's gonna start the dialogue about how we'll how you can have some options and make some selections as to when to use which and what those trade-offs are. So Ravi, uh, go ahead. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Peter. Uh, so so far, we have seen various solutions that we have in, in the Altair software ecosystem. And now we are partnering with uh, CPFT to bring in virtual re Barracuda virtual reactor that can even elevate all the capabilities that we have and go to the next level of uh, scale and complexity that we can solve with uh, in terms of the fluid particle multiphase flows. And so we might have a question. So we have presented various solutions. So how can I choose what, what solution is appropriate for my particular use case? Uh, so the next few slides, we'll try to attempt that. And it's pretty clear that it's 
it's not a straightforward answer, but okay, let's say you have a, a simulation system where the effect of fluids on the particle can be neglected. It's pretty much non-existent or negligible that you can ignore it. So definitely EDEM is a solution for that. So you can have various particle size assign loadings where you probably don't need to consider the effect of fluid, go for EDEM. And another solution on the other, other end of the spectrum is you have a very dilute dispersed flow or just no particles at all. Solve is a solution for that where you don't need to consider, you, know, you don't need to have a, a specialized DEM so solver to uh, resolve all the particle motion because the particle motion probably doesn't have an effect on the flow or it uh, doesn't, there's no, not many particle particle interactions. So you can use Accusolve for that. And you have a, a broad range of uh, simulations in between where you want to study the local effects in uh, at a smaller scale from a lab scale to pilot scale where you want to study the local effects uh, definitely adam act is always a solution when you go to large scale peter yeah and that's that's really where barracuda virtual reactor comes in uh where it's not necessarily the local effects where you know around a jet a particle pushing on another particle but but really the bulk behavior of the the overall large scale system that's really where barracuda virtual reactor complements that um, you know similarly uh, we talk about physical scale but you also have things like the number of particles to model uh, so in these the type of unit I showed that FCC regenerator you also have very large physical particle counts and these these really can't be you know, reasonably resolved with all that complexity uh, with with DEM uh, where in contrast Robbie yep uh, so in medium to small scale systems where the particle counts are reasonable that you can r run a simulation in a reason reasonable amount of time so we can go with accusolve edem or go with edem with coarse graining so that you should be able to solve reasonable amount of particle counts up to like 5 to 10 million for a couple systems you can you can solve even higher particle count but the amount of uh, the return of return on investment is uh, diminishing when you go with the very large particle counts And uh, so when you when you study the medium to small scale systems, uh, the particle particle contacts can be resolved with EDEM. And if these uh, interactions are critical to the solution, like if you have fluid aspects that are uh, where the particle to particle interactions are critical, or systems like combined harvester where you have uh, regions where the particle bed or the particles are agglomerating at a certain certain location, so there's accumulation and the contact forces are critical, and you need to accurately resolve this particle context. Definitely EDMAC is always a solution for that. But when you have hydrodynamics as a dominant, Peter will talk about that yeah. particular case. And exactly, and there's an overlap in all this, but uh, you know, for Barracuda virtual reactor, typically is most suitable when, when the drag force is dominated, the fluid particle hydrodynamics. Um, you know, there certainly could be areas that are inner particle contact dominated, but but Barracuda is typically where where it is the fluidized fluidization and and the the drag is dominant. Um, you know, and and this this also goes to things like like shape. Um, and and what you're going to see with all these is there there is some overlap here uh, where the tools do do certainly overlap and and you have that flexibility. But let's take a, the shape as the example. A virtual reactor is capturing the bulk effects of the shape. You know, each particle is is still discrete Lagrangian. And so uh, drag models that take in things like sphericity or shape effects can be captured or or otherwise they're typically calibrated based on the real particles. Um, the shape can indirectly affect things like collisional models. Uh, surface area certainly directly affects heat transfer and, and reaction models if the chemical reaction is uh, area surface area dependent. But, but in barricade reversal reactor shape is not directly computed. DM is different than that. Yeah, so when you have systems like uh, blast furnace where you have a completely packed system, there's little uh, room for air to flow through that. And the calculating the heat transfer between particle to particle through contacts is also really important. And systems like we just talked about combined harvester. So you have both the areas where 
it's much dilute where the hydrodynamics is, is dominant, but also there are locations where you have a, a, a particle bed that kind of forms on the sieve and uh, Schaefer, right? And there, computing the particle-particle interaction is really important for determining how closely the particles can be packed. So it's really critical to this whole solution. So since DEM directly computes the contacts, it resolves each and every contact, the shape is inherently included in this contact. So um, either solve is definitely the solution for that. And uh, so, Again, like just re reiterating the point. So particle particle interaction and hydrodynamics are the primary concerns and EDM and IK solve. But if particle particle interaction can be uh, resolved at the global scale, but not at the detail scale, then uh, and also additional yeah. things. So yeah. yeah, that's where virtual reactor really then will couple that with the the not just the heat transfer, but the, the, the multi-phase reactions. Um, and, and it's not so simple. So on this left, we're saying, OK, Maybe moderate particle counts on that lower end of that axis, that's EDM active solve, and the higher end is larger scale. But the, but there's the details matter. So take moving geometry, that's actually a very complex model, but the moving geometry often affects directly that particle motion and pushing. So with Barracuda Virtual Reactor, we, we do have some very limited capabilities for moving geometry, but generally we say, you know, the Barracuda Reactor is not a good fit in those cases. Uh, and and Robbie, I'll just brag on you for a minute. That well, I don't know what you called it—a a carbine, a combine harvester—but that that moving fan and then that moving blade. I mean, that's what you all do. That's beautiful. Yep, exactly. So I, I can't uh, highlight or mention the capabilities of uh, Eden and Akisol when it comes to mesh motion. It's uh, really too good, uh, and the type of motion that we can simulate are like any motion like even rotation translation combination of both so and edm active solve is really suited for those type of applications and um, and like i said earlier so it's really hard to kind of put this in a just a one two dimensional plot here you know it's uh, there there can be cases that can be complex and probably doesn't actually fit into this description that we have so we have uh, many more cases you can always reach out to us to if you have any questions about uh, deciding which tool is right for your uh, application, just reach out to us. We can help you navigate through that. But the whole point that we would like to project here is that, so whatever application that you have, we have pretty much all the solutions in that are appropriate, that are that can give accurate and uh, good results for your uh, particular application. And all those tools are available in a single license. So. Again, yeah, reach out to us if you have any questions. And uh, with that, we would like to uh, summarize this. Uh, Dave Curry uh, will talk about. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, Peter. And thank you, Ravi, for sharing your insights into Axel VDEM and Barracuda. And like I said at the start, granular material fluid problems, they exist everywhere. And the complexity of applications involving particles and fluids can be significant. And EDEM, Axel, and Barracuda offer engineers a way of capturing these. Uh, complexities and designing effectively for such behaviors at a range of scales all the way from the laboratory up to the the largest examples we see in industry um, each of these solutions has its own strengths and means we can cover a full range of particle counts application scales and complexities so we've explained some of the ways you can choose which product is right for your application and you have to, if you have any questions about that please do get in touch with the Altair and the CPFD software teams and uh, we'll be on hand to help guide you and the last point I want to just repeat and stress is that crucially all these solutions are available today uh, on Altair units so just before we go to questions I also just want to talk a little bit about some you know ways you can uh, find out more about uh, both uh, the solutions we, we talked spoke about today so on the Barracuda virtual reactor side there's a page on the Altair website um, you can see the link there the team at CPFD they've got some web-based training coming up the next class is next week uh, so we're running March 25th to 29th and then another session in April so you just need to send an email to the address on the on the screen there to get yourself registered and then later on this year 
Um, there's the Barracuda Virtual Reactor Users Conference that's being held in Chicago. So that's going to be a great event, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, we're, I'm sure we'll be there to to to, to look forward to, to to meeting you at that at that point as well. Um, on the Altair side with Axel and Edem, uh, again we have uh, virtual instructor-led training classes. Um, we've got ones introducing Edem, introducing the CFD solutions we have. These are available on the uh, the, the learn.altair.com website alongside some e-learning and then our usual support address if you have any questions is, is shown there as well and to reiterate if you want to get your hands on any of these and you've got uh, Altair units uh, that are APA enabled then just go to the Altair One marketplace and you can download EDEM, Axolv and Barracuda today. So thank you again to Peter and Ravi and thank you all for, for attending. We've got maybe uh, just under 10 minutes to be able to to have some Q&A. So um, some questions have come in. Peter, Ravi, if you're able to unmute, I can uh, uh, share some of the questions with you and we can uh, decide who answers from there. So go for it. Yeah. OK, so um, first question I, I have, I guess this was coming in, Ravi, during the, uh, the Edom Axel part of the presentation. Um, and the question was, is it possible to analyze magnetic powder? Um, now, that might be more of an EDEM question, and so I might start with that, but maybe we can talk about it in the context of the coupling as well. Um, you know, EDEM does, doesn't have a built-in magnetic material model, but we do have extensive API customization capabilities. So if you know the physics you want to implement on the particle side, then there's a very good chance that there'll be a, a way of introducing that, that sort of customization into your EDEM simulation. Um, Ravi, anything else you want to add from the, the coupling perspective to that question? No, I think, yeah. So like you said, it's most uh, probably a particle side of thing, but if there is any uh, question about how the fluid affects on the uh, particle that being included with when it comes to magnetic forces, yeah, we'll be able to help you. So. Okay, good stuff. Um, Peter, one question that came in while you were presenting, um, and this question is, what do you think about the possibility of using this methodology? And so I guess you know, the question is, does Barracuda Virtual Reactor do this? Um, using the, this methodology for simulating SAG or ball mills? Yeah, so the, some people have done that. Uh, I. I so as a company, we, we, we license the software, we support customers, we also have a services group. Um, I'm not sure we've done that ourselves. I do know that some aspects of that have been done um, when you're looking at the, the, the fluid flow uh, dragging particles around. Obviously, we don't have the, the moving uh, parts, and so that the, it's been limited. But I, I believe I've seen some publications where people have used it. Um, maybe that's one that we could reach out after. Um, and, and discuss. We also have, I'll, I'll just put a quick plug in there. Uh, on our website, there's a resources tab and there's a resource finder. And usually the first thing I do when I try to answer these, I'm not gonna do it here when I'm sharing my screen, but uh, I pull up I pull up the website, go to the research finder and I, I start typing in a few keywords and and really there we're seeing not just you know what we published, but we're, we're trying to get a good database of what's in the literature and link to, you know, if that's available on Science Direct or elsewhere. Uh, people that have published and so we have seen a little bit but I'm just not the expert on it so I can't speak definitively. Okay yeah I'll, I'll just add actually that from simulating some of the material babies and mills that's an area where DEM and EDEM in particular is, is strong you know, we can look at things like the breakage of particles uh, things like that so um, if if uh, the person asking that question is still online and is interested in discussing more about sag or ball mills, you know, as well as uh, you know potentially looking at Barracuda, I would also advise taking a look at AEDEM as well for for that particular application. Um, Ravi, this is a question for for you. Um, what what range of particle size is the Axolv EDEM one way coupling valid? Um, so it sounds like the user has been is, is experienced with Axel VDEM. Um, they've mm -hmm. been looking at an agitated tank, and they're just uh, you know wondering about getting the correct lift forces for for sort of two to three millimeter particles. Can you give your thoughts on on particle size limits for the one way coupling? Yeah, so there are multiple factors that can uh, come into picture before we can get to a right answer. So uh, first thing. More than the particle size, the particle concentration, like if you have a dense system, uh, that's where uh, 
the differentiation comes between one way coupling and two way coupling. So if you if you have some accumulation of particles at certain locations, which can influence the local fluid velocity, that's where you have to go to two way coupling and we can't do one way coupling. So that's the main thing we have to look at. So I don't know exactly the details of the system, but that's the first thing we should go back and look. And uh, the sizes, uh, two to three millimeter, yeah, it depends on the equipment as well. So if it, in relation to the equipment, if those are significantly large, then you have to go to two-way coupling. But if you have a 10 meter tank and you're doing two millimeter particles, then you can go with one-way coupling. So yeah, we can uh, reach out to you and look at your system. You know, we can have a call and just go to the details, but uh, I'm pretty sure we can handle that use case well with the two-way coupling. So we can help you with that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd just reiterate. I think um, to the person who asked the question, just if you're if you're wanting some advice on getting appropriate lift force, etc., just get in touch with support, and we can take a look at your case. Um, a question, Peter, on Barracuda virtual reactor. So the question's about okay, you're modelling the, the the calculations that you do. Is it entirely just straight up calculations on GPU? Or are there any AI tools that uh, a virtual reactor kind of integrates with or makes use of to assist in the calculations? That's that's a timely question. Uh, there's a lot of interest these days. So uh, the software itself is is physics based. You know, mix of conservation, you know, known physics and empirical models. Uh, so Barracuda itself is not an AI tool. What I have seen and what is possible is uh, because virtual reactor, um, let me take a step sideways. Uh, you can do everything through a nice interface. So if you're new to Barracuda reactor, you can walk through a tree, set something up, you can visually post process, but all that behind the scenes goes to things like text files on inputs, uh, solver can be run in batch mode, um, all the output can be brought back to, to the, the native data files, those are not locked up, you can access them. And so this opens up things like optimization, uh, machine learning. I, I know there's been a group out of the University of Birmingham that did some, I'm not going to say it right and give them full full credit, but it, it was, a, I, I don't know if it's a genetic algorithm or a, it was, it was a real cool way where they, they started optimizing their output and having uh, the, the, the tool itself go in and change inputs and to map out the space and optimize the, for a particular solution. Uh, so it does lend itself toward that, but Barracuda itself is not an AI tool, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks, Peter. And you're right, it is, it is timely. And hey, we should uh, we should explore how Barracuda Virtual Reactor could time with some of the AI tools that Altair has as well. Maybe we could do a future session on that. Um, listen, I'm afraid there are more questions, but we're out of time for today. Um, what we can do is, I, I assume we, we can see who's asked the question so we can follow up individually. Maybe we can look at potentially, you know, a blog post in off the, you know, following this webinar um, that kind of outlines some of the, the answers to the questions that people have asked as well so that everyone can see the discussion. But um, I will conclude the webinar today. Just just a you know, reminder that it has been recorded. It's going to be posted on our resource library. Um, and I want to thank again Peter and Ravi for taking the time to, to present today. I hope you uh, found it an informative session and, and it's clarified a little bit about where, where you might want to use which of the tools that are, are available under Altair. And then lastly, also thank you all for, for attending. It's been great to have you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Thank you all very much.